In this video, we're going to continue to look at vesicles. And this time, we're going to look at vesicles with neurotransmitters. Um, neurotransmitters are also transported by vesicles, like the ones we talked about in the last video. And they're released via exocytosis. They bind and then they release their cargo to um, their neuron. Now, all vesicle fusion is not spontaneous, even though it's often looking that way inside your textbooks. The reason why it's not spontaneous is that you have to remember the plasma membrane of both of these membranes, both the vesicle and where it's going to, are negatively charged. Therefore, they will naturally repel each other. Therefore, we need many proteins to help mediate the fusion between the vesicle and the target membrane. And the proteins that do this are called snares. And there's two basic types of snares. You have your R snares, which have arginine, and your Q snares, which have glutamine. And these are parallel alpha helixes that will wrap around each other like so. And these snares are uh, seven residue repeats, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A and D are hydrophobic. That helps with the contact between the snares as well. You'll also get hydrogen bonds between the arch and glue or glun from these snares. So R and Q are interacting. Water can't be between them. This hydrogen bond and hydrophobic interactions make these uh, snare complexes be a really strong interaction. And you can have specific types of R snares and Q snares, which helps vesicles and whatever membranes are trying to go to have a more uh, specific relationship. You don't want your vesicles going to any type of cell. You don't want your cells to be taking up any type of vesicles. So having specific Q and R snares can help mediate this interaction. So let's look at this diagram. So there's only one R and Q, but it is estimated that five and 10 complexes are doing this all at once. So your vesicle and your membrane come together. Your snares will start to zip together and they will keep doing this, wrapping around each other. And this will lead to hemifusion where the lipids between the vesicle and your membrane are actually removed. So you're removing this negative repulsion. Eventually, these two membranes will actually start to fuse until they're one membrane, and you'll get a pore that happens, the fusion pore, and the cargo from the vesicle can be released inside the cell. And eventually, uh, the whole vesicle will be enveloped into the cell membrane. And this is generally how you deliver um, cargo from the vesicle to the membrane. And in vivo, this takes 0.3 milliseconds. In vitro, this takes roughly a half an hour. Therefore, um, snares can't be the only protein that are involved. There must be other proteins involved that we're still trying to uh, understand what they are and how they work. But this is basically what is happening with the snare proteins. Now, viruses also use proteins that are like snare proteins, and that's because many viruses actually travel in your body um, through the plasma uh, membrane vesicle. So you get a virus infected cell, they will start making viruses. These viruses leave um, by a, a vesicle of the plasma membrane. And these vesicles need to find a new cell to go and attack. And so this happens roughly in three different phases. You're, your, um, well not your, but a virus enclosed vesicle will have viral proteins on them. These will help bind specific glycoproteins. This, this will let the virus know this is the right cell type to infect. This is all activated by fusion proteins that are viral, viral membrane fusion proteins. And then you will have a fusion event happen which will release your viral genome into the host cell cytoplasma, which is called receptor-mediated endocytosis. And now this genome can go and make more viruses. Um, so influenza, common virus, 
the protein that is responsible for this interaction is called hemagglutinin or HA for short. This is a well-studied protein so we'll look at it for our model of how viral proteins infect cells. So here is the structure of HA. Um, it a, has a globular region which has a region for binding salic, salic acid. So this salic acid is part of a glycoprotein if you remember back from that chapter. So basically this is looking for a salic acid to bind so it knows it's at the right cell. So it has a globular portion and a fibrous pro portion which is 76 angstrom alpha helix. Um, and what happens is that in the endosome, HA will go through a jackknife-like motion. So here's the binding sites. And once you bind, this fibrous portion will snap out like a jackknife. So jackknife can go in, then it can go back out. This conformational change to this jackknife action is what helps to draw the viral and the host membranes together and then you will have a fusion event that is similar to the snare complexes. So that is how your body is being affected by the flu during flu season. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.